bad Polish roads and the supply problem can slow our offensive. If our panzer columns, with no opposition in front of them, are halted in the middle of Poland because of supply failure, our prestige will... Are you telling me that we cannot supply 75 divisions of this campaign? No, my Führer. I am simply asking the question. I want answers, not questions! Merkel! I, uh, I have asked Colonel Shotland of my staff to prepare a report on the logistical situation. My Führer, gentlemen, I have before me many pages of facts and figures, detailed data of the problems of supply for our forces in the Polish campaign. But we are on the eve of war. At this late hour, the Fiora wants solutions, not problems. I'm sure that I'm speaking for my superiors when I say that if the Fiora orders that we supply 75 divisions or 100 divisions, it will be done. I have taken the liberty of preparing addenda to the report showing how this supply mission can be accomplished. However, if the general staff wishes to hear a detailed logistical report... No, no! That won't be necessary now. There will be continued negotiations with England and France during the coming week. But this will not affect my plans. On the 1st of September, we will attack! Let's have a toast to our newest general. Speech. 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 Well, all I can say is I owe my good fortune today to you, my friends, and to the faith we all have in the Führer. The Führer. Gentlemen, the ladies, as promised. Would the general care to meet any one of these ladies in particular? Is that a part of your official duties too? Not exactly official, sir. But I've been an aide to a general before. Sure, sir. General Hazard, I hear you recommended my promotion. Please accept my thanks. Your supply operation in the Polish campaign was a remarkable achievement. You deserve recognition. You are very kind. And your supply operation for this party is superb. <laughs> now I'm going to make a recommendation to you. Stay where you are. Excuse me, gentlemen. When you come this way. Oh, you oh, can't no, do that. That's not fair. <laughs> come and meet our guest of honor. General? Our uh, Lily. Our finest import from our Italian allies. We've met before several times. Yes, the soldier who runs away. <laughs> I hope he's braver on the battlefield than he is with women. I think I frightened the general. General Shotland's as fearless as a lion. I guarantee it. Will you sing for us, please? Wait a minute. What would you like to hear? I'll sing it especially for you. You decide. Shotland, someone wants to meet you. The English woman who brought us for us. Oh, yes. Yeah. General Shotland, Miss Karen Crosser. Well, don't stand there. You said you wanted to talk to her, didn't you? I'm flattered that you want to talk to me, General. Yes, on behalf of Lieutenant Reinisch. Oh. He's your most ardent admirer. His greatest wish was to meet you. He felt that your beauty merited a higher rank than his. But I assured him that you judge a man by his service to the Führer rather than by his rank. Yes, of course. If you'll excuse me. Ich liebe dich, ich liebe dich. My love will last forever. Ich liebe dich, ich liebe dich. I give my love to you. Does he dislike all women? For a moment, I thought it was only me. Oh, no, it's not a matter of dislike. Disinterest, maybe. He's devoted to his career. 
suspect he must have some other interest. Oh, yes, clocks. <laughs> This time of night? No, nothing. You have important news? No. No news. You rascal. No news? So now it's General Shotland. That's wonderful. But just for that, you come here this time of night? You've got a drink. Oh, of course. The last of the Scotch whiskey. Oh. Well, what goes with the promotion? A new assignment? No, no change of assignment. But something new goes with the rank. An aeroplane. I have been assigned a plane Fueled and ready to take off. I can go anywhere. I could be in England in a few hours. Bad thoughts. Bad thoughts. For 25 years. In 25 years, ever since I've been living this masquerade, living as an exile with roots going nowhere, a clock without a face, I felt at home for the first time when I sat in the cockpit of that plane. The first time I could forget, I was written off as a traitor by my country and my family. They'd never relieve you of your post. You know that. Even if you did escape, the War Office would probably consider you a deserter. You're still under orders. You know that, too. Yes, I know it. It's not been easy for you, Alex. And it will be more difficult for you as time goes on. But it has been difficult for others, too. Yes, of course, you're right. I know I shouldn't complain. If I'd spent those years at home, with any luck, I might perhaps be a major. Possibly not even that. Now, what's really wrong, Alex? You know, everybody I've seen gets into this mood in the first year of their assignment. Your clock's run down. You're 24 years behind. No, no, I'm not sorry for myself. It's just that I had a big fright this evening. That's all. Somebody suspects him? What then? A woman. A very beautiful woman. I met her again tonight. Oh, you needn't worry. I shan't fall in love or anything like that. I know the risks. It doesn't worry me. It worries you, and that worries me. You've done so well with a difficult assignment. I hate to offer advice. Your advice has saved my life more than once. Alex, you're on duty 24 hours a day. You've got to learn to relax. With this promotion, you're under a magnifying glass. You'll be conspicuous if you don't run with the pack. That shouldn't be so hard for you to do, from what I hear of the women in your circle. Go back to the club. Running away from this woman will only be worse. No, I've been locked in the barn for too long. This might lead to more than just a pleasant evening. I can't take the chance. But you don't have to. I shall take the chance. Is that an order? Of course. In your arms, I do belong. I dream and I see your face. 
to disappear. Well, tonight, I've come back. That must prove that I like both. You can be nice when you want to. I'll forgive you. Thank you. Let's drink to that. To the nice things in life. Tell me, do you like clocks? Clocks? Yes, I collect them. I've got quite a large collection at my apartment. I'd like to show them to you. <laughs> Don't you mean etchings? <laughs> no, clocks. <laughs> I'd be delighted. How beautiful. Yes, I only acquired it the other day. It's a musical pyrotechnic clock. It has quite a history. The most interesting thing is that it was what made originally... What clock is that? Uh, that? Uh, that's quite interesting. It's called a clepsydra. It's probably the earliest type of timepiece that can be called a mechanical clock. This cylinder is filled with water, which drips through this opening regularly into the tank below, causing a float inside to fall and so work the gears. You see, like this. Mm, interesting. These clocks are very nice. Is that all you're interested in? Is that all you want out of life? Well, it's very difficult to know what one does want out of life. Do you know what you want? Yes, for me it's easy. I'm a woman. I want to be a successful singer. You know, you're at the end of the road. You've nowhere to go. You are a woman and you are a successful singer. Your records are heard everywhere. You sing on the radio and broadcast to the troops. But my real ambition is to sing in Paris and London. Hurry it up for me, will you? Start the attack on France soon, so I can see Paris while I'm still young. Did I say something wrong? On the contrary, you have reminded me of all the work I have to do if we are to accelerate victory in the West for you. My aide will drive you home. Reinish? Good night. Good night. Operation Sea Lion has been abandoned. Abandoned? By the order of the Fuhrer himself. So, Adolf is not ready to attempt the invasion of England. It's definitely off. Supplies are already being shifted eastward. Russia? In 72 hours. The general staff thinks it's madness. They are right. This is wonderful news, Alex. This is the beginning of the end. This will bind Russia to the West for all time. I don't trust the bear as you do. I've seen the brute firsthand. We must get 
get this news out at once. I have more news for you. I've been appointed Deputy Chief of Supply. Wonderful having I shall have an important voice in all supply operations. I can bring the whole military machine into chaos. Supplies will get lost or we won't get there in time. Don't be childish. What? You will do the best job of military planning that you humanly can. After 25 years of this work, you ought to be able to remember that you're not a saboteur. Yeah, but the situation has changed. The situation has not changed. Not for you. The secrets that you get, such as today, will be of more value to the Allied High Command than any service you can perform for the German But it will be so easy for me. Out of the question. If you are dismissed from your post for some blunder, you could be of no service to your country at all. From now on, the Gestapo will be watching you more carefully. This aide of yours, this fellow Rheinisch, is undoubtedly a Gestapo man himself. No doubt of that. So far as you are aware, has he any possible basis for being suspicious of you? No. Why should he suspect me? I'm the perfect Nazi. Their report was of such a nature, Admiral Canaris, I thought they should transmit it directly to you. Sit down, Nana. Well, I'm listening. To begin with, sir, ever since I've been with General Shotland, I've done some investigations on my own. And I've discovered that Shotland is not his right name. He was born Alexander Scott. His parents were English, and he was educated at Oxford University. Your information is incomplete. He was born of an English father and a German mother. He spent his childhood in South Africa. He attended Heidelberg as well as Oxford. By 1914, he had Germanized his name, enlisted in the German army, and distinguished himself as a gallant and loyal German officer throughout the war. But, sir, a man with such a background... Dual nationalities are common even among our national leaders. Rudolf Hess was born and raised in Egypt. The Führer himself is an Austrian. Yes, sir. A man cannot control the circumstances of his birth, but he can make a choice. General Schottland made the right choice. If Schottland had been a spy, he would have returned to England after the armistice in 1918. Instead, he remained a German, and Germany was a defeated nation, and it was hard to be a patriotic German. Your assignment to General Schottland is routine. All high-ranking officers are under surveillance of this sort. I don't want to discourage your vigilance, but it would be well for you to exercise discretion. Yes, sir. I am late for a staff meeting. General Shotland is one of the rising stars of the Third Reich and has already won the Fuhrer's favorable attention. I remember that, sir. Good day, gentlemen. I'm not satisfied. The Führer himself raised Shotland to the General Staff Corps. Apparently, he is satisfied. General Shotland is a very clever man. And unlike some of his colleagues on the General Staff, a model national socialist. A 100 percenter. That's what bothers me. He's too perfect. He's a 101 percenter. I'm afraid it isn't quite what I'm looking for.
gentlemen. Please don't let me disturb you. Continue. As you know, the enemy's main effort appears to be in the direction of San Lo. The Seventh Army has been unable to mount a counterattack in force northeast of San Lo because of the critical supply situation. Enemy air attack has demolished 90% of our tactical quartermaster stores in areas Q, V, and Y. The petrol reserves of Panzer Group West have been completely destroyed. Even the secret depots at Bemer and Verneuil have been wiped out by pinpoint bombing. How could this happen? That is the question before us. General Merkel feels we cannot lay the blame to faulty camouflage, right, Merkel? Yes, I personally inspected all supply areas in a low-flying plane. If I hadn't known where the dumps were, I couldn't have spotted them myself. General Hauser's theory is that a well-organized French underground is the cause of our trouble. Intelligence has established that the underground have been particularly active in those areas. There are many civilian agents equipped with radio transmitters. It is probable they report the position of our locations as soon as we set them up. Yes, I agree. There's no other possible explanation. We all agree. No, sir, I do not. Any French civilians found in areas Q and V would be shot on sight. They were all evacuated three months ago. Furthermore, decoy depots have been set up in that area. How is it, then, that enemy aircraft bombed only the actual depots and left the decoys untouched? As General Merkel says, our depots were so carefully camouflaged that our own air spotters had difficulty in finding them. How is it, then, that the enemy were able to score direct hits on every single one of them? Then what possibility do you suggest, General? I suggest the enemy knew the exact location of those depots. I suggest the possibility of a leak of information at a very high level. Just what do you mean, at a very high level? I mean, from the general staff itself. This is preposterous. By your leave, General. Traitors often spring up in the most preposterous places. This is outrageous. What is your evidence? General Shotland, you are my deputy. I refuse to permit you to make such reckless charges in my presence without the evidence to back them up. Evidence of treason, General Wagner, does not come neatly wrapped in packages. I'm suggesting a possibility. Do not be evasive. Whom are you accusing? Nobody in particular as yet. But we all know general staff officers who disagree with the Führer's strategy, who maintain that we cannot win the war. Defeatists who haven't the courage to bring their views into the open. You've heard their whispers. We all have. I submit, gentlemen, that defeatism is the doorway to high treason. Put two defeatists together and you have a conspiracy. You call that evidence. In 15 years. In my 15 years on the General Staff Corps, I've never heard of such irresponsible and malicious gossip from a fellow officer. With your permission. General Shotland, I suggest that you leave espionage to group leader Kaltenbrunner and his secret service and address yourself to your own duties in the supply service. Marshal Keitel, with your permission. That is all, gentlemen. One moment, General. I know you want concrete evidence. I don't have it. And I suppose it was idiotic. Not of idiotic. Me. Rash, perhaps, but not idiotic. When you spoke of defeatist talk, you were referring to Merkel? Yes. I don't know. Anyone else? Colonel Heights. Yes, I know about him. There are others as well, and it goes beyond talk. As you suggest, there's probably a conspiracy afoot. I have reason to believe there may be a plot directed against the Fuhrer himself. I don't yet have all the links in the chain, but when I do... You probably won't be hearing any more defeatist talk. Your disloyal colleagues won't trust you now. But keep your ears open. Alex, it's Corners. I must see you. Follow me up. I'll leave my door open if it's safe. Right. I had to take the risk. They've arrested my courier. Here I sit down. 
There's a cool skin. So do not go to the shop until you hear from me. From now on, I shall transmit your information myself. Is that wise? It is not wise, but we have to take some risk. When can you get me the information about the new supply dumps in northern France? I shall have the overlays of the exact location of the depots within a week. And, Alex, it is very important that we should know of any change in the strength or location of German divisions on the French coast since your last report. There have been no changes whatsoever. You are certain? Yes. Changes were contemplated and then dropped. Now, we have to plan on the possibility of my being eliminated from the scene. If anything should happen to me, you will find your new contact in the personal column of the Völkisch Beobachter. There will be an item advertising the sale of the Nuremberg egg. It is one of the oldest time pieces, small enough to be considered a watch. Yes, I am familiar with the Nuremberg egg. Of course. I'd forgotten what an expert you've become. You will go to the address listed, and you will offer 3,000 marks. But it's not worth nearly as much as that. Exactly. If the seller refuses your generous offer and insists on a price of 90 marks, you will have found my replacement. I don't like this. Be careful. It is you who must be careful, Alex. You are the irreplaceable one. Well, the War Office may be able to replace you. I cannot. Such sentimentality for a model Hitler, Jenner. Well, I must be going. Would you like a drink? And no, thank you. A nice collection of clocks you have here. Some I haven't seen before. report just arrived. Shall I enter it on the map, sir? No, no, I'll do it. It's very late. You get on home. Have my car sent round. Yes, sir. My car here? Yes, sir. All right. I shan't need you anymore tonight. Dietz will drive me home. I'm afraid that'll be impossible, sir. What did you say? I've orders to accompany you, sir, to Gestapo headquarters. Naturally, sir, I don't know the details. I, I heard some talk. What sort of talk? That the old antique dealer Cornets has been arrested. Oh? I can only assume, sir, that since you patronized his shop, the Gestapo wants you for some routine questioning. It is considerate of you not to assume that I myself am under suspicion. Call the Gestapo headquarters. Tell them they're coming right over. Tell me now. You'll tell me sooner or later, so why not spare yourself the agony? Your friend General Shotland is here. For his sake, let's get it over with quickly. Tell us your contacts. 
I can help you. I should have anticipated that. Do you suspect everyone who patronized that antique shop? Cornets had a half a dozen officers of general rank among his clients. General Wagner, Marshal Goring. Does that make Goring a spy? Cornets was found with top secret documents in his possession, which could only have come from the service of supply. This material could be available to at least ten other generals besides myself. What was the connection between Cornets and the assassins? The assassin? Would you answer my question? Were you plotters working for allied intelligence? The plot against the Fuhrer? So you know. Go on. I know nothing about it, except that I had my suspicions. Indeed. Will it make it easier for you to confess if I tell you that your plot has failed? I had a call from the Führer's field headquarters less than an hour ago. Your bomb exploded according to schedule. Several officers were killed. But the Führer himself escaped without serious injury. The Führer's safe. I'm glad. Your interest in the Führer's welfare is almost convincing. You accuse me. Your hands are not as clean as mine in this affair. Get me Kaltenbrunner on the phone. I'll talk to him about this and to no one else. Get me group leader Kaltenbrunner, please, on the other telephone. Group leader Carlton Brunner, this is group leader Miller speaking. I have with me... Yes, sir, I am listening. I have arrested three of the plotters here. Graf Stauffenberg, Ulbricht, von Kvierheim. Have you got that? Good. You will arrest General Hauser and Merkel immediately. Let Heights alone for the moment, but have him followed and see where he leads us. Quartermaster General Wagner was involved, but he saved us the trouble by taking his own life. There are others in the service of supply who are implicated. Yes, sir. I have just arrested one of them myself, General Shotland. He's still denying everything, but I think we can get him to talk before long. Goodbye, sir. Issue orders for the arrest of Generals Hauser and Merkel at once. General Shotland, you are under arrest for treason. And if you think that your rank will spare you from our more persuasive methods of interrogation, you're quite mistaken. I don't believe that was Carlton Brunner on the phone at all. That's enough. Thank you. This is Group Leader Miller speaking. You idiot. Did you say that you'd arrested General Shotland? Yes, sir. Shotland is one of the few men on the staff who is absolutely in the clear. He sensed the existence of a plot almost as soon as I did. And what is more important, told me about it. Release him at once. Apologize and make it convincing. General Shotland, you are free to go. There has been some mistake. I hope you will accept my apologies for the rude treatment to which you've been subjected. You understand that such methods are often necessary if we're to track down the real traitors. Don't apologize, Muller. 
You were only doing your duty. Thank you, sir. Everyone must serve the fatherland in his own way. Even an occasional half-wit. Advertised the Nuremberg egg for sale. Uh, Nuremberg egg, Nuremberg egg, Nure... Right here, sir. Of course, it is not in working order, but as an antique, very nice. I'm willing to pay up to 3,000 marks for the right one. <laughs> 3,000 marks? It's yours. <laughs> for 3,000 marks, I'm even willing to put it in working order for you. Never mind, it's not the one I'm looking for. But excellence... Uh... is indeed a surprise. Well, there must be some mistake. The advertisement said 97 Marburgstrasse. This is 97 Marburgstrasse. Won't you come in? General. I'm sorry, I don't wish to inconvenience you. The newspaper must be an error. I was interested in an antique that was advertised. A Nuremberg egg? That's correct. The advertisement made no mention of price. The general should know more about it than I. How much would you offer? Well, I'm looking for something special. For the right one, I'm willing to pay up to 3,000 marks. That seems to be a great deal of money for a watch that doesn't even keep time. Well, what do you think it's worth? <laughs> well, <laughs> it shows you really how little I know. I was willing to sell it for 90 marks. Well, at that price, it's a bargain. But I'm afraid it isn't exactly what I'm looking for. If you will excuse the intrusion, Captain. I would like to sell it. I'm sorry it isn't exactly what you want. So am I. Good day. Come. 
You ordered me to report on my return, sir? Yes. Compile the reports immediately for tomorrow's staff meeting. Yes, sir. Quite a coincidence meeting you. Yes. That's all. Yes, sir. Coat. You did say 90 marks. Yes. And you did say 3,000 marks. Yes. Unbelievable. Do you have anything to drink? Yes, I think we both can use one. Thank you. Soda. Please. Remember that evening when you took me to your house after the dance? You seemed kind of... Attracted to you? I was. You behaved so strangely. I couldn't understand it. And I was annoyed at my failure to develop a possible source of information. <laughs> it's amusing now, but at the time it wasn't. Hiding the smallest personal feelings for fear of betrayal. I feel released from an emotional straitjacket. You don't know what this means to me. With you, I can... No, you cannot. With me, you must be as impersonal as though you were with the general staff. Our dealings must be professional, objective. Anything else would endanger our work and ourselves. You're quite right. Is it you who receives my orders from London? Yes. How? It's a shortwave receiver. You can be shot for having that. I can be shot for almost anything I do, if I'm caught. How do you transmit my information? I have a method. I'll explain what it is, as your friend Cordads would have said, when you need to know it. Very well. But may I? Of course. We must find a cover, some excuse for meeting each other regularly. Let the Gestapo think we're having a love affair. The facts must be otherwise. Oh, yes, of course. Will Captain Rhinus complicate matters? No, I don't think he'll be a problem at all. Good. We must arrange a plan so that we don't carry incriminating documents around with us. I'll come to your place any time you want me to and spend the night. expecting me. I know. May I? These days, bargains are hard to find. You made me a very good offer. I couldn't turn it down. It seems you've both found what you were looking for. Does that surprise you? Not really. I should have expected it. 
I was born to be a general's aide. The general's waiting. Anything else I can do, sir? No, nothing else tonight. Very good, sir. You told me it was important. You have underestimated Captain Reinisch. He's a bigger problem than you thought. No, he's just jealous and proud. He thinks he's in love with me. He's also a Gestapo agent. What will you do about it? He must be disposed of, effectively and positively. There's only one way. Come into my bedroom. Please. What is it? Here. Open it. And you'll find out. Oh. It's lovely. When I saw it, I thought it was made for you. Oh, I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything. Do you call that a kiss? That's better. Much better. Oh, I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything. Do you call that a kiss? That's better. Much better. After tonight, nothing should happen between us. Tell me, you could be sure of is this the work of an agent of the Secret Service or of a peeping Tom? I'm sorry, sir. I should have played it before taking the time. The thing isn't even passionate, much less incriminating. Your affair with Captain Reinish. <laughs> Captain Reinish? He's nothing to me. He's just an amusing young boy. That's all. Reinish. Kiss me. If another one of your hunches backfires, it'll be your head, not his. Wait. Close the door, please. Turn it off. Counter offensive. Arden sector. Counter offensive Arden sector. December 15 is too long. I'll have to cut towards counter and sector. I'm sorry, but we must get that information back. This is going to be a major push. If von Rundstedt breaks through, it could be a major disaster. Do you know anything about harmonics? No. Then you wouldn't understand. I can't get all this into one song. This method of transmitting information is too limited. You must get that message through. for the front the day after tomorrow for conferences with von Rundstedt about the supplies for this offensive. Take care of yourself. I shall be listening to your broadcast tomorrow night. Today, the 21st of October, 1944, the futile uprising in Warsaw was brought to an end. Our positions there remain secure for all time. And that is the end of the news for tonight. Heil Hitler. This hour of song is dedicated to our armed forces, whatever they may be. Our regular soloist on this broadcast, Fraulein Lily Baroni, will not be with us this evening. But in her place, Radio Berlin takes pleasure in presenting Emmy Kerner, whose inimitable style has already made her a favorite songstress of the German soldier. <laughs> Wait for me here. Yes, sir. What happened? 
don't know. I was taken off the air at the last moment. Any reason given? No. The Gestapo? No sign of them. I don't understand. I must be suspect. There's no other good reason. My singing has never been so popular with the troops as it is now. Alex, you must leave at once. Until I find out what's behind all this. Alex. I can protect you. Alex, don't you see what's happening? We're being caught by emotions and personal feelings. Our emotions sinful. Our personal feelings are crime. Yes, for us they are. I just shrug when the Gestapo arrest you and when they question you. Hmm? If it happens, yes. Well, I won't. If they found out about me, there's nothing you can do. If they haven't, there's nothing we have to do. Your radio, we must dispose of that. If they come for evidence, the radio will matter the least. Don't think of me. Think of a way of getting that message through. I have to go to the front tomorrow. I'll have a chance then. How? I'll pick up a field transmitter. I shall be near the front lines. I'll slip away by myself and transmit the message. But there'll be German monitors around the area. They'll track you down. Not if I work fast enough. There must be some other way. Can you think of one? No, but Alan... Now, we will say goodbye without emotion, without personal feelings. And if we're lucky, we'll see each other again. And there'll be another parting. Unemotional and impersonal. Attention. Attention, Allied forces. Allied forces, attention. Attention, Allied forces. Attention. Relay the following information to your headquarters. This is code. Sir, would you explain to me what you're doing? Corporal, is it your habit to question general officers? No, sir, but the circumstances are unusual. If the general will please identify himself. Of course, I'm General Rittmeister. I mean identification papers, sir. May I see your papers, sir? Yes, sir, my briefcase, I'll get them. Stay where you are, I'll get them.
Exactly. Exactly what he said when they brought him in. Something about a radio transmitter and a German general shooting him. He was incoherent. Can't you give him an injection or something to bring him to? He's in a coma, Major. You'll have to wait. How long? The bullet's lodged in his spine. Could be a day, a week, or a month. If he lives. to the door. I felt the stop it. I worried about you, Alex. I've missed you so. I failed. A patrol surprised me in the woods when I was sending out the message. Did they see what you were doing? Well, it doesn't matter. I killed them. All of them? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Have they given you any reason yet for taking you off the air? The official reason is that my singing was too sad and sentimental for the troops. Well, as Dr. Goebbels considers himself an authority on the entertainment world, maybe that is the reason. No, if that were true, they'd also ban my records. Thank you. I'm afraid they figured out my code and now are waiting. Waiting for me to lead them to other agents. That's why after tonight... Yes, I know what you're going to say, Lily, but it doesn't make sense. We've established ourselves in everybody's eyes as lovers. To suddenly stop seeing each other now would be too suspicious. You must hide. Open it. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, but the matter is urgent. This is General Shotland. There's your papers, General. Captain, it's General Shotland. I've seen you many times at Wehrmacht headquarters, sir. Thank you. May we speak with you alone? Yes, of course. You will excuse us, General? We shall check on your statements, if they are inaccurate. You will find that I've told you the truth. Were you leaving too, General? Please, stay a while, Alex. The gentlemen are through with their business. little Nazi stepped on the toes of a big Nazi. And now he's wanted for defeatism. Who is he? 
The Berlin radio sensor. They can't find him. They're checking everyone who knew him. I haven't seen him in months. Is that all they asked you about? That's all. Maybe they're not on my trail at all. I don't think they are. Then all we need to worry about is how to transmit your information. I don't know of a way of getting it through. There's only one thing to do. What's that? Corners used to argue against it. But now there's no other choice. I must work out a method of sabotaging the Ardennes offensive. We will destroy their armies. And we will drive them into the sea. I wish to congratulate the Fuhrer. This operation will be an answer and a sharp lesson to those of little faith. I have just returned from Marshal von Rundstedt's headquarters. The Marshal has posed certain supply problems. He requests that the forces committed under him be provided with ten days' supplies. Uh, we must consider whether such a diversion of material would not jeopardize us in the event of a winter offensive by the enemy on the Eastern Front. What does Quartermaster General Topper have to say about that? It is true that what is assigned to von Rundstedt cannot be sent to the Eastern Front, but fuel is crucial both in the West and in the East. Doesn't anyone have a definite idea? My Führer, the Ardennes offensive is based on quick penetration. If the Marshal is stalled for lack of supplies, it will fail. Marshal von Rundstedt asked for ten days' supplies. His estimate cannot be questioned. Any commander's estimate can be questioned. They always ask for more than they need. We'll be able to use captured enemy stores as we advance. Brilliant. The Führer has provided the solution. With the enemy supply dumps falling into our hands, this campaign can be operated with three days' supplies instead of ten. The Americans have vast fuel depots in the Bastogne area, that we know. Given a quick penetration, we can capture those depots intact. General Schottel, this is impossible. I know there will be objections from textbook strategists and from those who cannot find the word audacity in their dusty manuals. I do believe they will be wrong. Does anyone here have an objection? that the forces under General Montgomery have broken von Rundstedt's drive to the sea. They have taken the initiative and will soon be entering the heart of Germany. Von Rundstedt's inability to hold his newly won positions in the Ardennes comes as something of a surprise. In the south, General Patton's third army is attacking von Rundstedt's flank and is quickly moving towards the Siegfried line and Hitler's stronghold at Berchtesgaden. Von Rundstedt has run out of fuel. The Battle of the Bulge is over. a letter from my son at the front. His group thanks you for the picture you sent them. Thank you. We all used to listen to you on the radio. We enjoyed your singing very much. public have not forgotten you. No, not completely. I still get mail telling me how much they've enjoyed my singing and how much they miss me. But a few days ago, I received the most ardent letter from no less than a general. Oh. General. <laughs> 
He particularly enjoyed the extra little something I added to my song. That may be our answer. The soldiers want to hear you sing. You have an obligation as a patriotic German citizen to respond to their demands. Yes, of course. What do you mean? Smile. We may be watched. Unless the Allies get definite information that Hitler will fight it out in Berlin, they will head for back this garden. I still don't understand. You no, know, we should volunteer to entertain on the Western Front, to sing to the frontline troops. I'll go with you. The information will be delivered to the Allies personally. With my rank to get us well forward, there should be no difficulty in getting across to the Allied line. But getting back, it will be more difficult, won't it? My comeback. The war is almost over. Where shall we be when the war ends, Alex? London or... We. I'm going with you to help you cross our line. I'm still under orders. When Hitler's face falls begin to crack under the pressure, I shall be there to help the process along. And enjoy it. If I had any choice, I should like to remain with you. There is no choice. You were assigned to me not for my consolation, but to transmit information. Yes, sir. Good night, Ranish. Good night, sir. leads directly to the American lines. Stay on it for half a mile, then take to the fields. This way you may avoid patrols. Sounds simple. Now, should you be stopped, say that you're looking for this village, Einsberg, where you believe your husband might be. They'll direct you back to this inn. As soon as you're out of sight, cross this field and take this alternate road. I don't think I'll have any trouble. Now, when you make contact with the Americans, you'll have to tell your story many times before they'll believe you and until they check the code word. Is there anything else? No, nothing else. you would be going with me. I'll be with you soon. You know, just outside central London, there's a very old inn called the Fiddler's Three. I don't know why it comes to mind, but in a sense, it, 
It's everything I've missed all these years. One day I'll take you there. And around us, men and women will be drinking, laughing, arguing. Remember, that will be our first rendezvous when the war is over. What will we be like then? You and I. I'm anxious to find out. Me. I'm trying to find a village of Weinsberg where... Kurt. It's one minute past six. I'm sorry I'm late. You look as if you haven't been to bed all night. I haven't, sir. I met a young lady here. The general has no objections. Objections? I have nothing but admiration. I wish we could draw on such reserves of energy from every German officer. All of my breakfast. Yes, sir. Leader Müller at Gestapo headquarters in Berlin. Hurry, please. All lines to Berlin are tied up. It's an important military call. It must go through. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do till the lines are cleared. Will you hang up, please? Good morning. Two breakfasts. Yes, sir. Yes. Zitterland, you know, or don't you? Uh, I don't know. All I know is that his name sounded like Rittman. Well, the name isn't important. It was probably false anyway. But surely you remember what he looked like? I've looked through all these. Has he seen a photograph of every German general? No, sir. Only those under the command of Marshal von Rundstedt. I didn't consider it necessary to include the generals on the Eastern Front. An officer of another command might have been visiting the area. A general staff officer, for example. Get me a photograph of General Schottland. Get me Captain Reinisch on the telephone. I seem to remember something about Schottland visiting von Rundstedt. Reinisch will know the exact date. I want to speak to Captain Reinisch, please. Yes. Yes, I understand. Take a look at this. This is your man, isn't it? Isn't it? I don't know. It looks like him. But it's hard to be sure. Could you identify him if you saw him in person? I think so. Especially if I heard his voice. I think I would recognize his voice. Good. 
Captain Rhinus is still at the Western Front with General Shotland. Corporal, you're going to have a little vacation in Berlin. Take him out. The moment General Shotland and his aide return, they're to be brought here for what I hope will be a little reunion with Corporal Zutelin. Fetus hanging on the lampposts. Which is worse, the fetus or traitors? I'll only take a few minutes to get the papers I need. Raj, call headquarters and tell them we'll be late. Rhinish. Didn't you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Well, then why didn't you answer? Ever since last night, I've been thinking about you and me. I even called the Gestapo today, but I didn't get through. Perhaps it was fate because it gave me more time to think to try to find an answer. To what? You'll die here. Your death will appear as suicide. The way a general of the Third Reich would choose to die, with honor to the uniform you wear, not as a traitor whose hands are covered with blood of men who trusted you. You will be buried with full military honors, your coffin draped with a flag. And no one will ever know the truth. What do you hope to preserve by all this? Before you die, I must know the truth. Tell me, who are you? You don't want to know who I am. You want to know who you are and what you are. Your Third Reich was built on meticulous response to authority and it's being destroyed by it. You want to know why? It's a healthy sign. But it's too late, Rhinish, for you. Too late for the truth. What made you start thinking? What made you have doubts? Did you suddenly have a human moment and did it surprise you? After living all these years without a conscience, Rhinish? You talk about conscience. What I have done, I have done for my country. Right or wrong, with honor. Truth is honor, Rhinish. And justice. Truth is allegiance. Even as I suspected you, deep inside me, I hoped it would be a lie. I'm sorry for you, Rhinish, and the others. I don't want your pity! Hate me as I hate you. Hate is all I have left.
reply from Shotland's quarters. Still no word from Rhinish. No, I'm still trying to reach him. Well, where was that girl's body found? Outside the village of Einsberg, in a ditch, on a road leading to the American lines. Take a squad of men. Search General Shotland's apartment. Even if you find nothing, wait there until he returns. Then bring him here for Corporal Zutterland to identify. Fiona's bunker. Yes. General Shotland, I wish to see the Fiona. Yes, General. One moment, please. Shotland. General Hart. You know the others. Kierke, Roper, Dice, the size, Orbit. You've just come from the front, haven't you? What do you think? There is always hope. You sound like him in there. The enemy is crushing our defenses on all sides. The Soviets at the gates of Berlin. And you think there's hope. General Wenck's third army is still intact until that is gone. There is still hope. We've, um, we've been discussing other measures. Shortland. Are you familiar with the Wehrmacht High Command's directive on preserving the officer corps? Mm -hmm. We have to consider whether the time has come to apply it. If Germany is to be reconstructed, the officer corps must remain intact. It must be brought to the attention of the Führer. And it must be presented by someone who enjoys his respect and confidence. You think I'm such a person? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Will you do it to Shortland? General? the General Wenck's Third Army can relieve the pressure on Berlin. Wenck is well supplied and his situation is ideal for a counterattack. Gerard, hear that title? Wenck, Wenck is our answer! Yes, but Wenck is holding back. I ask permission to cut through the line and make contact with him and personally deliver your order for his army to attack. So there is some offensive spirit left. My Führer, do not allow the treachery of a few defeatists to destroy your faith in the German people. Yes, the defeatists. They are the enemy. They will be eliminated. There are some on your staff, Marshal. Who, I... who are they? What are their names? General Hart, for one. Who else? General Kircher, General Eichler, General Zeiss, General Rupert, and General Opitz. Arrest them! I have just left them. They're outside. Rupert and Opitz? Yes. But if you arrest these officers, I... Ah, nonsense, Kettle! It will reinstall confidence in our loyal officers! I never did trust Hart in his clique. Shotland has only confirmed my intuition. Any others? Yes, there is one other, but not... Who is he? Group leader Muller. They will be taken care of. Every one of them. Prepare papers authorizing General Shotland's exit from Berlin. Yes. Shotland is to be arrested on sight and shot if he shows any signs of resistance. All army and military headquarters are to keep on the watch for him. 
Control. Emergency motorcycle pursuit unit requested at once. This side of that machine gun. Yes, sir. I'll go the rest of the way on foot. Yes, sir. Turn the car around. Go back to the way you came. Thanks. I, I mean, good luck, sir. Hi, Hitler. I'll look after the clock, sir.